All right, so can you introduce us? What's your name? Um, so, a lot of people know me from the show, from Backchat, mm -hmm. but I have recently gone through a rebranding, so I now go by the name of Big Pinks, but oh. you can call me Pinks or Pinky. Cool, cool, because I've seen a lot of, yeah, Yasmin Pinks and this and that. <laughs> All right, it's changed now, yeah? <laughs> but I will make a note of that. <laughs> and, and can you share your socials for us? Um, so my socials is, my Instagram is Big Pinks with an underscore, my Snapchat is Big Pinks, and my TikTok is Big Pinks with an underscore as well. Cool. And what's your favourite platform? Um, right now, I'm going to say Snapchat. How come? Because, like, I, one, is a new Snapchat, so I'm very free on there. Um, I can apply when I want. Um, you can kind of decide who can see your private stories, and if you want to open your... Yes, snap, block people from kind of talking to you. I don't know, I just feel like I'm a bit more in control compared to my other social medias. Plus, I got deleted on TikTok at 20K. Oh, and no. Instagram, I'm on my last warning. So. <laughs> Wait, why did they delete you on TikTok? Um, I just think they're haters. It wasn't because of like, anything in particular, like a post or... No, I got a couple <laughs> warnings. I got at least oh, 10. Oh, right, right. Yeah, yeah, I was like on my final, like... <laughs> what I'm, I'm, <laughs> And what about Instagram? What are they kind of warning you for? Like um, posts? So do you know what it is with Instagram, right? So I'll have people cussing me on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And then I'll get back. I'll, I'll move mad. I'm sure you guys all saw what show I came from. <laughs> so I would, in the past, I would respond in a mad way. Um, and I'll post it on my story or something. And I'll get in trouble for it. Oh. But they don't see what they did before. So, yeah, I'm got, I've only got four warnings on this. It's not bad. Only four. <laughs> <laughs> No, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> um, and you do, what do you do for a living? How would you describe it? Um, I work in early years. I work with children. Okay. I've been doing that for like four years. Um, I love my job. Um, and yeah, it's something I want to continue mm -hmm. um, to do like for the rest of my, at least my professional life, definitely. That's what I want to do. <laughs> oh, that's nice. And, and like anything else? I know you do like lashes and... Okay, Mr. Research. Yeah, I do do eyelashes on the side. Yeah. Um, I've been doing it for three years, but I've just recently became self-employed. Um, okay. Obviously, I do work, but of course, I'm a business owner, I guess. Um, mm. So yeah, that's what I do on the side. I sometimes go to work. I can work from like 10 to 6, 9 to 5 or whatever. Come straight back home. I've got an appointment at like 7 or something. Finish about 9, 10, work the next day. So that's normally oh. like my schedule, like Monday to Friday kind of thing. Quite a lot. Yeah, yeah, I know, right? So you're, you're a, word, um, a hard worker. Yeah, 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 I work hard, definitely. No, I've, cool. I've never been given nothing for free or like handed anything for free, so. No, that's good. Thank I, you. I mean, not, not that you haven't been handed anything, it's good <laughs> that you, you work hard, you know. Thank you. <clears throat> and you've got um, a website as well and an app? Yeah, oh. <laughs> yeah, no, I was impressed. Because obviously, you see people's websites, but I've never seen it go to an app like that. Yeah, before. I made all of those actually. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so cool. I decided to make a website. Started to learn a little bit about coding and all that. I'm not that great, right? Oh, let, me right, not, right. let me not force it, but um, I'm self taught in a lot of things, even graphic designs, nice. stuff like that. I've taught myself how to do all these things, so yeah, thank so you for quite... acknowledging that. I appreciate that. Oh, no, that. definitely, definitely, yeah. <laughs> I, I like to cover a bit of everything, you know? okay? Cool, so you're, you're quite a creative as well, would you say? Yeah, definitely, definitely more creative than a content creator, mm. to be fair. But there was a time that I was a content creator, I was banging out videos. TikTok. <laughs> and you know what I mean, before I got deleted. All uh, right. Would, would you go back to TikTok? Or? I've got TikTok now, but I've just kept things really quiet, really personal. Um, I have no, like, gain in doing those type of videos right now. Uh, it will go against, as well, my career. So uh, I'm just a bit older now, I guess. I mean, some of these videos, I was like 28, 27, 26. Mm. You know, I'm going to be 31. <laughs> Oh, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, so, like, you know, time's just moved on. It's not that like, old, though. It's no, no, I'm not saying it's old. I've yeah. just moved on. That's all it is. Like, it's not really my interest right now. I'm more interested in other things. Oh, okay, like, so my business, making bit, money yeah. um, in other ways. So, yeah. No, nah, fair enough, fair enough. And you, I know you work from home with the lashes. Are you not scared of people knowing your dress or anything like that? Um, I've only had, like, two or three incidences where I just had to G-check. Two or three? That's a lot, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one, I, okay, two people I had to G-check. Um... One, it was a deposit issue. Not not deposit oh, issue, right. it was a lateness issue. Yeah. But I'm not talking about like 10, 15 minutes. I'm talking about half an hour with no 
like let oh, me know like a message or yeah. yeah do you understand and i'm chasing her then she's buzzed my buzzer then it took her like another 15 minutes to get so then it was like some dumb crazy stuff yeah, yeah so like so. when she came in and at that time my best friend at the time she was doing nails so i was always protected there was always someone in the house yeah. this was during covid times Oh, right, yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah, right. yeah. So I was always someone in the house. So my brethren was doing her clients' nails, and I was just, thank God she was a witness. And this woman's come in, and in my head I said, all right, cool. Just letting her know there's a late fee in it. Bear in mind, I was doing these eyelashes for like 20, 25 pounds. Mm. They weren't expensive, do you know what I mean? So my late fee was like 10, 15 quid at most. So what is she paying? 40 pounds? 50 pounds? I see, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what people are paying now <laughs> for the basics, you understand? Like, so she, at the time, I felt like, Okay, she's really taking a mic. But anyway, she came in, she made a fuss about it, you know, beating her chest like she was going to do something. And, oh. you know, I just had to sit, I sat on my bed. I remember I just, I just sat on my bed. And I kept quiet the whole time whilst her and my nail tech at the t was, was going back and forth because I said to myself, in my house. <laughs> in my house. Though, yeah. That's what house, I just kept yeah. thinking. But luckily, I remained really professional. We reminded her of the terms and conditions which she agreed to mm. before sending her deposit. Um... After going back and forth for at least another 20 minutes, I, I had decided I'm not doing her eyelashes. I had a no deposit. I had a no refund policy, but I said, honey, I will give you a refund. Get out of my house. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, you know, we resolved it in that manner. She left, and on her way out, you know, she was an African lady. She was young, but she was like a little bit of an auntie in it, like what I am now. Um, <laughs> 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 yeah, so anyways, she was like, oh, you know, it's okay. I'll give you your deposit, you know. Yeah, and young, uh, and your children's children will die. And she no ran way. Out. It was like so. It was crazy. That's so rude, yeah. that was at like, the first ever <laughs> mad incident. So I made sure my terms and conditions were tightened after that. Because yeah. I thought they were tight before, but clearly they weren't. So I made sure I tightened it up after that. Then there was a the second person, which she was a regular client, but I think she just she only came to me when I did offers. Oh, right, right, right. So only when I was doing it for like 30 pounds and stuff like that, that's when she came. So one time she came and she claimed that the eyelashes fell off a week after. I've been doing that eyelashes this time. So I said to her, look, if you next come, I'll do you a discount. My girl wanted the lashes done like today, like now. Like, no, she's in a whole fresh set. Why should give her her full money back? We have a no refund policy here. Yeah. So after the back and forth, I just blocked her. What's she going to do? Come to my house? <laughs> 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 so that was done. Then the last one was a lady coming from Oxford. Oh, wow. Oxford so for, found your land, for a £20 deal. Wow. Oxford. I'm sure it's going to cost up to £20 to get to London. So it wasn't adding up. But I didn't even know she was coming from Oxford until on the day. I see, yeah. So I had things to do, something similar to what we're doing today. I had like a little interview, a podcast, and I felt like I was running over time. So I'd asked her if we can push it. And she's like, nah, nah, nah. Um... I'm on my way. I'm coming from... That's when she said she's coming from Oxford. All right. Appointments at seven is five. It's like, bro, where are you traveling from <laughs> early? But all right, cool. Anyways, cut long story short. Seven comes, she's not here. Seven thirty comes, she's not here. I'm messaging her. It's one tick. And I'm thinking, well, she's still on the train from Oxford. Mm. Anyways, eight o'clock she comes. She, well, she, she says she's around the corner. Takes her another 10 minutes to come. Comes to my house. It's now 8.30. Thank God I always got a witness in the house. Always got a witness in the house just in case. So I've shut all my doors because I really know she's not going past the corridor. <laughs> like, <laughs> she ain't coming past the corridor. She's coming to the house and she, she's got her daughter. Oh, it's a bit weird, isn't it? She's got her 13 year old daughter and it's a grown woman. And she was like, Yeah, I'm coming from Oxford. The reason why I came, I wanted to bring my daughter because I had a, you can't bring a plus one. It's my house. I live in a studio flat, you know. So, anyways, kind of so short, she was like, Yeah, my daughter's a big fan. And I was like, Listen, your daughter can't be here. <laughs> <laughs> your, your daughter can't be here so you guys have to make your way back to Oxford <laughs> and um, she was chatting about can her daughter can stay in the kitchen and I'm like but I'm not having your friend anymore like, why are you mad like I started getting aggy at that point and I just kind of let her know like again I'll give you a, she chatted pay extra I was like one you're late mm. two you brought someone with you and um, I've cancelled. Like, I'm, <laughs> we're not doing it. Yeah. So she, I gave a refund back as well because she was just babbling on. This is why I don't support black business. I said, Auntie, <laughs> Auntie, please remove yourself from my house. <laughs> Go and argue with someone else. How can you travel from Oxford? That's crazy. So, yeah, those are the incidences I've had with my eyelashes. But since then, everything's been A-OK. -okay. Um, can't complain. And I love what I do. I can do it in my own time. 
hopefully this time next year I'll expand, but we'll see. No, fair enough, fair enough. Um, what's, what's life been like growing up? You know what? I feel like it seems such a long time ago. Yeah. Um, where I am now and what I do now and the people I interact with now, I don't have many people back then in my life now. Okay, right, right. Even, you know, narrowing it down to family. Do you understand? I'm like in such a different space. What I would say then was that, you know, I was courageous. I was, had a lot of energy. But I think deep down, I was broken. Okay, right, right. I was broken from various things. And we can sit here all day of me highlighting each one. But I will tell you now, it's only when I've reached the age that I'm at now and I went through like a life change, like literally life threatening situation this year that I realised that I was still broken. Mm. And so I've just been trying to uh, get myself in, into a space now where I can just let go of those things. So when people ask me about my past, I don't even like talking about it because it takes me back to that broken person. And like I said, some of the things I witnessed this year, I don't want to be that person anymore. So, you know, if I think about how it was growing up, I think, yeah, I was, I was a soldier, definitely. I was a soldier. Put on the front, but we no, moved. fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> so do you feel like you've, you've gone through quite a lot of change growing up and you, you're in a better place now? <clears throat> I would definitely say I'm in a better place now. Yeah. Um, I think everyone goes through change, to be fair. I don't want to really single it out to just me. I think everyone goes through change. But I think I was in denial with a lot of things growing up. Um, and also coming from, without revealing too much, but coming from an African household or a Nigerian household, yeah. I feel like the way they deal with things is we just sweep things under the rug. Oh, well, like things that happen in the family. They just things that of... happen in the family, <clears throat> disappointments, there's a lot of shame, oh, see, guilt, yeah, yeah. if you don't marry this person, abuse. Like it's, it's just the way Nigerian culture deal with it. They do not deal with it head on. They would rather to avoid shame, mm. they'll just sweep it under the carpet. And I think I was unfortunately a subject to that, to that culture, even though I was born here and my parents grew up here. Um, it's unfortunate that I was a victim of that. But um, <clears throat> yeah, those things I was in denial of. But looking back at it now, I'm definitely in a better place because I'm starting to make those changes that I maybe should have made a couple of years ago, or even just a couple of months ago. Mm. So, yeah. No, I see what you mean. <laughs> if you had to kind of, you know, speak to someone, because I know you work with children as well. Yeah. <clears throat> if you had to speak to someone who's kind of going through something that you might have went through, what, what would you kind of tell them? Like, is it just get out, you know, you can deal with it? or? I think you need to find a deeper spiritual connection. Mm. Um, and I think one of the things that I was missing in all of this tragedy, tragedy that I was going through <laughs> was I had no connection with God. Okay, right. Like, none whatsoever. Not that I didn't believe in him, but, you know, it was like whatever, innit? We're in, <clears throat> we're in a different time now to back then, you know, a lot of us when we were younger, we would be forced to go to church and stuff like that. But as you've got to know, it's kind of a bit free spirit kind of thing. Mm. So yeah, I had no connection with God and I think that's something that I found this year. So I would just always tell people, definitely be in touch with their, their spiritual connection and pray more. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people are just in the, just just thank God like you're alive. You'll be surprised that one line of prayer what it will do for you and the blessings that will be coming your way. But I think we need to prioritize that that and that's something that we can't do right now in the the society that we're in. Do you know what I mean we're a bit distracted with nonsense. I think there's a lot of distractions. <laughs> we're just distracted yeah. with nonsense. Where you know it's easy for us to get ready and go out, but we don't want to pick up the Bible and read one scripture. What yeah. one scripture is like literally one sentence. Do you know what I'm trying to say? But it, and I'm, this doesn't just apply to uh, Christians. This is all religions, but I'm just speaking on uh, Christians because that's where I'm tapping into at the moment. But yeah. No, no, fair enough. Um, so you were going through a bit of therapy as well. You still doing that or? So um, we're currently looking at. Um, I'm currently looking to sign up again. Okay, right. Yeah, I think the whole therapy thing. What I'll say to people, it's not like a one-time thing. I think it's an ongoing journey. Right. And when you take those breaks, it's very easy to slip back to your old mindset. Mm. So I think that um, I was dealing with a case this year. And prior to that case, I was seeing a therapist. Um, 
it ended, it was about 24 weeks, a very long time. And, you know, I dealt with the case, I won the case, we thank God. But, Congratulations. Thank you. Well, <laughs> still ongoing a little bit, but I won the case, main thing. Um, and I just, I just think after that, I didn't really deep the impact that that case had on, it was like two, three years of talking about this case is going on. For. Oh, we've been on for a while. Like, yeah. yeah. The court system slowed up. As it, listen. Slow. Yeah. I didn't really deep the... It, like, it's, it's contributed to how I even carry myself today. I see. Some of the things they were saying about me in that, that court was not nice. What, what was the court um, um So, basically, there was a guy... I'm not going to say his name. I've already spoken about it in an interview prior to when I, when I actually won, like, yeah. a couple of months ago. But, basically, he recorded me without my consent, stuff in the house, and these were very explicit intimate videos, like these were not small videos. And without too much detail, not only has he done that, but I think he shared it with people. I see, yeah. I yeah. think he shared it with people. So, um, of course, eventually police got involved, you know, he got arrested and it just became a fight between me and him. Um, he was all admitting it in the beginning when I had him on the phone, but then when it came to court now it, it, it was a whole different story up, yeah. and you know a lot of the things they were bringing up was my social media how i dress wow i dress my bikini like yeah, yeah yeah they were bringing up a lot of things so things that i was doing on a normal day like i'll just go on snap and just do my thing and twerk and enjoy myself that changed because i felt like he painted me in such a way that i couldn't be that person because therefore i'm allowed to be treated the way that i was treated on that day that he recorded me that's, it was just not a nice feeling. Yeah. <clears throat> so that was without consent, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what, that's yeah. what voyeurism <laughs> is. Voyeurism yeah. is basically um, recording, sexual act, something for your own pleasure without, obviously, the person knowing at the time of the recording. It's, it's a proper long thing, but just call it voyeurism. Yeah. But yeah, like, um, I think after that, more things happened. Uh, it was like, it was just like one after the other. And the more it was happening, the more I was going back to my old mindset. And I think I even stopped going to church at one point. I was like, nah, God obviously can't hear me right now. So <laughs> I'm going to keep it pushing, you know. Um, so wait, in, in the court, they were playing your Instagram clips? or? Um, well, they played the videos. They played videos of what, sorry? Of whatever he recorded. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. Okay, right. It was it was a, it was a big violation. It was it, it was. Uh, I can imagine, yeah. Uh, there's violation. Like I've been violated before, but to relive it, yeah. To it, it was three years later. I, I didn't deep it until you understand. Like it so was. You almost getting judged by people yeah. that are meant to be helping. Kind it of, was yeah. just. It was. Oh, it was awful. And like I said, if I tell you this guy, yeah, in my head, it was a good you. Yeah. I wouldn't have even. Till this day, I don't really think he knew the impact of what he was doing. I truly still believe that, despite what he's put me through. But I could have never have thought he would have done such a thing. It was a good you, calm you. I don't deal with the bad boys publicly, anyways. But <laughs> <laughs> discreetly. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, I like my good fellas, you understand? Because I'm quiet a lot. So I like my quiet Donnies. I like my guys that are nice and innocent. You sure? <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking because I, I watched the interview with you, I think it was Big Eagle, and you said you don't like the good guys. <laughs> I mean, I was seven months ago, so maybe things have changed. Um, okay, cool. So this is my problem. Um, I, in terms of dating, I, I, would, I go for the good guys, but I think what I attract and what I always get on with and what seems to mm. last longer is a certain type. I don't want to say bad boys, but it's a certain type. But that type doesn't help me grow as a person or as a woman. So I, I, I am really trying with these good, innocent Donnies. Do you know what I mean? I am trying. What do you mean by innocent, though? <laughs> Just, right, you what's, know, what's the, the, they work nine to five. Oh, okay, right, right. You know, no kids. They're legit with their car insurance. It's not this person's name. If they have a car accident, they just abandon the car because it's not in their name. <laughs> um, they don't have no criminal record. They're not at DLT, Malta, Danky Sounds. You know what I mean? Like, you see them Donnie's there. Because to them, and I know this is a mad statement about, I'm about to make, but to them, securing a girl like me is is a big deal for them. Mm. So it's an easier transition for me compared to the ones that are like me. The okay. ones that are like me, there's competition. 
<laughs> I'm not trying to compete with my... I'm not trying to compete with my... And I feel like the men that I attract is competition. Oh, I see. Yeah, I see. yeah, yeah. Firstly, in the bedroom, who can pipe the, who can pipe it the most? <laughs> <laughs> who, who can really give it? Who, who's really submissive here? There's that one. Then it's like, um, you know, they, they, they accept who I am with the social media thing. Like they're yeah. cool with it. They don't mind it. In fact, they like when guys are even coming because they know they're the ones that. Are, uh, uh, <laughs> you, you understand? I just feel like it's very toxic. There's no oh, growth. I see. It's just, you understand, and, yeah. and with them guys, I, I do see potential. I'm not saying that I've succeeded. I haven't. I was dating a guy very recently, good guy. <clears throat> but yeah, it didn't, it, it just wasn't for me. What was it about him? You know what? I know you guys are trying to catch me up. <laughs> God, I'm not going to have him see this clip and know that I'm talking about him because he's the only guy I was dating. Oh, fair enough. So I'm not even going to go there, but he's a sweet guy. Um, it just, he just wasn't, it just wasn't, he wasn't my guy. It wasn't what I wanted. So. It can't always work out, you know. Exactly. And you're young, so. Right, you're, yeah. you're going to hate me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> We're gonna probably talk about this in a second, but yeah. I've just recently done surgery. Yeah, no, you told and me, yeah. Um, my faha is hurting my crotch. I need to go to the toilet. <laughs> no, go, on, go. On. I just saw myself out. No, yeah, go, on, go is ahead. That cool? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Thank you. Of course. Oh my god! Imagine that chain journey I did. Oh my is, god! Is the chair comfortable though? It, it, it doesn't matter what I sit on, babes. It's the, oh. it's, the it's the it's the thingy. Yeah, Lord. And I'm gonna have to turn this off. You know what? Making me hot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'm going on a date later, honey. You'll have me sweating. You're going on a date shit. today? Yeah, straight after. Nice, nice. And you were nice or you're not sure yet? Huh? And you were nice or you're not sure yet? Is it a surprise? Oh, no, no, no. Just going for cocktails. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. He's been trying to link up with me for months. But <laughs> <laughs> his schedule's just been a bit off. So, blocked him a couple times. Oh, fair enough. Yeah, but we're good now. You say you blocked him? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's being annoying. I hate men. That's it's, what I, I feel like you like the, the toxic. No, I don't! Sometimes. I don't! I want a good man! You don't, man, you're a bad guy. Babe, stop me back the pillow, you know? He's got him all doing Spider Man shit. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Okay, let's see if this makes any difference. Okay. Yeah. That's alright. Cool. For now. <clears throat> Okay. Saving chat. So I'm trying to see, got a video of me, I'm trying to save it. Okay, I've got it. The video what? Just like. Oh, this? This part, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait, did you follow me today? Yeah. Yeah, I'm very rude. You didn't accept. I know, you would have been there for time. <laughs> I had to look on Slim's one. I know, I'm, I'm so rude. But have you deleted your post? Which one? I feel, I feel like you would have had more posts. So I don't know if you did like a quick clean up or you delete, <laughs> or you delete your post or... <laughs> Do you know what it is? It was part of the rebranding. The Yasmin Pink had to go. Like, oh, it was rebranding. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah so we yeah. got the big... Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to just let Yasmin Pink go a little bit. Like, just let it die down. Because so yeah. this you, we got these guys on Google and there's just so much nonsense that just comes up with it. Like, from music to back chat to YouTube to pictures, surgery, oh, you know, that. and... I'm gonna get. I'm gonna have kids one day, hopefully. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? It's just, it just was looking a bit mad. You know what I mean? Like it was fun when it was happening. Don't get it twisted. If, if somebody was to ask me if I regret, like no. But. No, I hear you. Yeah. No, fair. Where did big pinks come from? Pinks. No, big pinks. Where big did pink. big pinks come from? Yeah. You can't see. I'm a big babe. <laughs> you can't see it. <laughs> I'm a thick babe now. I weren't really this big before, but definitely gained. Some way over the years. Yeah, but age. is it is it a bad thing or is it a good thing? Or? I don't think it's a bad thing, but if we're just talking about the name, that's just where it came from. But I don't think it's oh, a bad right, thing. Right. No, no, no. On Shade Bro, I saw they reposted something that you said, which said, "I'm out every week with a different guy covering the bill, and I don't give a heck." Okay, let's talk about Shade Bro. Oh yeah. Uh, let's talk about Shade Bro. Yeah. Why are you paying attention to what they post? They post nonsense. <laughs> they post you quite a lot, no. They, they pick and choose. Oh, I, so they pick and hundred percent. Sometimes I, all I got to do is breathe, and they post <laughs> like it's not the things. Just like, uh, 
Why do you listen to them? <laughs> no, I'm asking you. That's why. No, I, but I came you, to the you, 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 that means you're getting information from this blog page about me. But this, <laughs> this shade bar was just chatting. They always chat. They always chat. I mean, I ain't got beef for them. Mm. I've worked with them, but they chat. So obviously, you know them kind of on a personal level as well. I don't yeah. even want to say on a personal level because I'll be honest to you, I don't know who the hell they are. Oh. I don't know how many people's running that thing. Mm. Do you know I what I mean? I just yeah. did a little collab with them and I can't even tell you who that person is. <laughs> if it wasn't really Shane Bar, oh, it yeah. could have been a fake. <laughs> no, I'm joking. But no, with, with, the thing is, the information, you need to remember with Shade Bar, they don't post context. Yeah. <laughs> you great, yeah? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> they don't post. <laughs> now, this one's taking the piss. They don't post it's context. Yeah. Oh, damn, I'll catch it. They don't post context, and I just feel like because they don't post context, it just allows people like yourself or mm. anyone else to just have that assumption. I mean, the whole going out on a date every week, da, 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 I never really addressed it when they posted it. Yeah, I don't go out every week, but what I'm trying to say is I will go out on a date and I will enjoy free food. What's the problem? <laughs> Next thing you know, you had people saying I'm opening my front for food. I said, it's just food. Mm. I mean, it's, there's a lot going on, like I was being f- flew now or flow now. What's the word? Flew yeah, out, flown, flown yeah. flee, whatever. <laughs> but that's not the case at all. Like, that's never really the case. It's like, you know, there was a time where, like, I was just living my best life. I just wanted to enjoy food. Guys wanted to take me out. I was okay with it. Mm. And that was, yeah, that was it. That's what it was. And it was just a bit of banter. Have you ever been flown out? <laughs> No. No? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't do that much research. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Should we move on for that one? Yeah? Yeah. Uh, um, oh, yeah. What do you think of the blog pages then? Do you think they just post <coughs> controversy, kind of, you know, selected topics, or do you think they kind of post a bit of everything? I think it depends on what type of blog page you're following. Mm. So I only follow two, and so I'm gonna sh- obviously I'm gonna shout out Shade Bar, which I have already, and I'm gonna shout out Made You Think One Hundred One. Made You Think is good. Yeah, uh, those are the two blog pages that mm. I follow, and these are blog pages that I've worked with as well in the past. Yeah, I've got an interview with Made You Think. Have you? Yeah, someone did oh, do their yeah. research. I didn't, ah! I didn't know that one. Yeah, ah! and that's when I was talking about all my growing up stuff. All right. right. Yeah. So um, I think it's called Matrix TV Media Matrix. I'm not too sure, but. Um, if you message me, I'm happy to like show you the link, definitely. Yeah, yeah. But anyways, um, I want to big them both up because um, I think they do their best to cover what is going for their audience, but they do dibble and dabble in other nonsense that doesn't necessarily suit their brand. Mm. But at the end of the day, you have to. You understand it's their page, it's their business, it's their marketing. They know what's going to get engagement and they know what's not. You know, Major Think posts music. He posts a lot of American news, mm-hmm. um, a lot of sales and streams kind of thing. If he posted um, <clears throat> a 21-year-old 21, 21 from Newcastle, but he's hard, he's hard, he's just dropped an dropped a EP, he's hard. It's going to get that 20, 20 comments, maybe, 1K likes. If he posts Renee and Lani and then this track that they've done to each other, I'm telling you, 5K likes. 200 comments mm. do you understand but it's just the society that we 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 live in it even happens to me even when shade brother posts me when they post the boring stuff i see the engagement when they post the, the hype stuff anything to do with men surgery yeah that's what the people that's want what, that's what they want to see one yeah. time shade brother posted um when i got my degree and they posted me and um, they posted a picture where like my, my boobs are like out here <laughs> and you can see everything and anyways in the comments they were just like oh why did she have to dress like that Psh, boy congratulations but she ain't working with my kids like, oh, wow. <laughs> and the engagement was so small but compared to like when I was on holiday and I was going back and forth with one of these influencers that, that, that went on for weeks that hype they were posting every slide of mine mm. you understand so um I think they know what they're doing, but I think you just need to... It's, it's up to you if you want to be a consumer. So even though I follow these pages, all of these pages are actually muted. Okay, right, right. Yeah, I, I go on the page if I want to, if I haven't seen something in a while, if I want to know something. But I don't allow myself to see it on a regular basis so that way I can't engage, judge people, make assumptions, comment, 
You know, I, I do try to do that often. Sometimes I get caught up, though. Sometimes I'm on there and I'm just like, but that's because me too, I, I've, I've got a big platform. They post me sometimes. Sometimes I've got to snap back. You understand? Or sometimes they post people that I know or things that I'm aware of and I've got to say my piece. You understand? But more time, mm. they're all muted. Um, but big up them, though, with what they're doing. At the end of the day, without them, what would we have as an update right now? <clears throat> you need, so you need UK news or UK, like platforms like this to, to post people. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. If we if even just pages that I don't follow, like I'm just Bay and mm. maybe UK gossip and all these things. I mean some of them post absolute garbage and like absolute garbage. But like I said, we wouldn't know anything. We wouldn't know anything, you know? So I've got I've got to give it to them. Like hand tight them for, for building a platform and keeping us entertained and updated and engaged all at the same time. I saw one of your comments on um, a video that we uploaded from Sarah Garvey. <laughs> <laughs> no need to body shame, although the show was trash. <clears throat> Talking about UK Badders show, right? All right, so what's his name? Uh, Sarah Garvey. All right, so we're going to address two things. Mm -hmm. We're going to address him, we're going to address the show. So, um, look, I checked his page, and you have to be really in this social media game for a while to know what a clickbait is. I've gone on his page... Yo, he, he bashes women all the time. Listen, it's normal. This is light work for him. This is, he's, he's got an issue. With, like, if, he, if he saw me, I'm fat to him. Trust me. I'm, I'm a fat babe to him. I'm masculine. You understand? Like, I've seen his page. So, so sometimes you've got to educate yourself and not be rattled by the norm because this is what he normally posts on his um, page. Mm. So this is nothing new. You can say what you want about him. You can comment what you want about him, but this is what he, he posts. However, looking at him on a visual aspect, I just think to make such remarks and to look like a Maltese that's melting, you can giggle, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you can laugh. But my thing is, is that, like, he looks like a, he looked like a melted Maltese. You know when you've just had a packet of chocolate out in the sun for a bit? too long and you try to take it out and it's all sliding down your hands and you, you try to eat and you got all lick it off your think that's what he looks like except he's not lickable so my thing is is that listen one thing i've learned about this social media thing yeah you can get caught slipping i'm seeing in the comments that he's done kiss the man for money you understand this is what happens when you, i'm telling you from experience mm. when you go viral get ready for all the smoke so I hope he understands where I'm coming from. You said something crazy, in my opinion. And I'm just letting you know that you are not even above the basic, let alone the average, to even be calling anyone out of their names, you understand? And if your preference is not these women, that's absolutely fine. You've got 19-year-olds on here. You've got 21-year-olds on here. You look old enough to be their father, you understand? So just be mindful how you're speaking about women. Mm. But at the same time, when he touched on the show itself... Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. A1, he nailed it. Oh, you agree with that part? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I just, I'm just talking about the, the, the cussing part. The cussing part was unnecessary. Yeah. If you want to talk about the concept, talk about the concept. If you want to say that the director is stupid, she's this, she's that, go for it. What, what are your thoughts on the show? Is, is <laughs> it out yet? I haven't even seen it. I don't know if it's out, but I know there's a lot of things that have been leaked. Yeah, yeah. It's a mess. Mm -hmm. It's a mess. All right. I mean, why, why I know some of the people on there. Yeah. It's a mess. But as in, like, it's the a way mess. it's been organised? It's, I think that part, definitely. The organising part. But like I said, I'm only going by people's lives and posts. You know, yeah. no one's watched any episode. No one has done a review on the episode. But I also know Lani. Yeah. On a personal level. And Are I know, you guys friends? or At one point. All oh, right, right. So I know when she wants to get something done. So is there beef or is it cool? <laughs> Why did she go like... <laughs> like two super wrestlers. You sound like my man, you know. You got a problem with my size, babes. No, no. <laughs> you know what that means, <laughs> isn't it? Like... No, no, no. Like knuckles. Yeah, no, it's no, no. It's not, it's, not, it's not beef. We were genuinely good friends. So yeah, it was yeah. more, it's 100% a falling out. I wouldn't call it beef. Even though I know she made some comments about me joining the show. It was sent to me, but I could just kind of let it... Oh, like, yeah, okay. like, I would have never gone on that show for so many reasons. And if I was her friend, that casting would have been sweet. <laughs> there was too much going on. You oh, got 19 year olds with 34 year olds. All right. And 
there's just a certain level of bullying I was seeing. I'm seeing someone's whole braid got pulled out. Wow. I'm seeing Lani getting kicked with the, the director getting hit with a frying pan. Damn. I just, I'm just thinking to myself, would this have happened if I was still her friend? Or am I bugging? Because there's no way my friend getting licked off with a frying pan is impossicant. There was just too much going on. Um, but like I said, the main thing is that I don't think he needed to call these girls out of, out of their name just because they want to do a trash show. The show was trash. We mm. get it. And that's just what I've got to say on the show. Would I have done it? Not in a million. No. I don't fight for camera. All right, I see. You know what I mean? I think what they were doing was very wild. You are in a different country. What, what is the concept of the show? It's like a reality show. Or... <clears throat> so there's another show in America called um, Baddies. Okay, yeah, yeah. And they go to like different cities in America and they've got Baddie East, Baddie West. I don't know if they've got Baddie South. And the producer... Um, the co-producer Natalie Nunn and another guy named Lamel or Lamore they've they come up with the concept and you know it's been working for them they've made money like you've got women swinging left right and centre they even step to the side to allow women to fight but you oh. know you're in a different country in a different culture that condones and accepts that behaviour yeah. they don't even care about getting invested they've got bail money you understand that that is the country that you're in and it's a much bigger country mm. so the kind of beef that some of these girls are in i promise you uh, they're not going to see each other some of them live on the other side of america you understand what i'm trying to say to you yeah. london is small yeah. the kind of beef that was created on that show with young girls as, as, as remember i worked with i'm not only have i worked with children but i've worked with the youth you understand mm. i've worked with 18 year olds 19 year olds 17 year olds 13 year olds i'm seeing 19 year old girls on there you know apparently sex workers you know Oh, young wow. girls and this is what we're promoting for them this is what we're doing for them so this is what I have to say on the show you understand that like, I think women fight I get it people want to see the drama but then to egg on and um, instigate things and put people in rooms that you know there's going to be severe problems I think that's wild you understand I yeah. heard Lani got arrested in Croatia due to damages and all this kind of headache. Yeah, Damn. what do you think this is? This isn't America, Han. Mm. You didn't even do it in the UK. You went the whole Croatia. <laughs> them man don't speak our, our language. How are you gonna explain to them all of this? Mm. You understand? So that's my opinion on the show. I'm not hating in it. I'm just I'm a, I'm a viewer like everyone else. Me and her are not friends. So just see me as a viewer. Yeah, yeah, I get yeah. Not not a beg. I heard there was two security guards for like was it nineteen girls? <laughs> Or something like that. We're not going to talk about the security. You know why? Because some of the people that were working behind the scene are actually cool with them, innit? Like, some yeah. of them are, oh, right, like, right, right. some of them are um, part of production. I'm actually generally cool with them. So I'm not going to get onto them. I don't really know how they did things. I don't know the back scenes on that one. I can only speak on the cast. Some of the people that I know, some of the people that I still follow, Lani um, and the dickhead that called them out of their names. Sorry. Did I call him out of his name? Oh, no. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, Maltese. That was rude. That was rude. Sorry. You were on another show, right? Back to London? Yeah. What, what was that experience like? Oh my God, so how old was I? Coming to four or five years now. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while. Um, I, at the time, my name was Hot. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I mentally prepared myself. <laughs> Did you know what kind of show you were going into? You know what? I only saw a little secret. Whenever Backchat came out, I wasn't watching like everyone else because it was a YouTube show. And I used to hate yeah. YouTube. I couldn't be bothered typing up YouTube, the adverts. You know what I mean? It wasn't like a normal, you can get a remote and just press YouTube. It was all long to me. So I never really watched YouTube. But funnily enough, that year of Backchat that I joined, a couple of months before, I had caught up on, I think, all the reunions. They had the oh, reunions, right? Yeah, right? Yeah. So the reunions kind of help you know what's going on, who's beefing and whatnot. So when I caught up to the reunions, I was kind of like more intrigued and then they did a season where they went abroad mm -hmm. and at that time now I've def I definitely know a couple of these cast members like in person yeah and so when it was time for my season I applied and I guess I just I got it like this like it was light work it, right. it wasn't even when I look back at it like when I think of it now I didn't even sit leave my my first audition I put a water bottle on my bum and it was standing on my bum what, what? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he 
it's a bit but why? <laughs> <laughs> I don't really remember, but I just think that like, my body at the time was so mad. Like so oh, somebody, so somebody just wanted to. Is it like when you have the the big butt and you put the cup on? They literally, it, like, yeah, and it oh, stayed, and it was like it was like. <laughs> And, you know, that's why that's I met Lani as well, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, that show definitely opened my eyes a little bit more about social media. I don't think I was really clued on. I wasn't mm. clued on, on how to make money, like monetize, but I also wasn't clued on, on how to manipulate social media mm. and create false narratives. I see. And that helps uh, monetize as well? Um, I guess it depends on what you're looking for. Engagement, clout, views for your YouTube... Money, it, it, it really, it depends. But you can really manipulate the internet to, be, to, to believe in anything. You can tell them your name's Thomas. Mm. And you can run with that for six months and, baby, your name's Thomas. It's true. Until so somebody decides to do some deal and then they find your birth certificate, you know, on some website. You understand? That's how, that's how it always goes. But, yeah, I just learned a lot about social media when it came to back chat. And I got a lot of, like, collabs and freebies. Like, my, I, even nice. now, my birthday's coming up. I'm getting my hair done. I'm getting my nails done. <laughs> I, I ain't paid for them stuff for in time. Do you know what I mean? So there was a lot of um, freebies. I'm getting some edibles for my birthday. So I haven't paid for that. Um, I've got a cat. <laughs> Didn't pay what? for that. <laughs> How do you get a cat? <laughs> I just put on my snap. <laughs> He's got kittens. So I was like, here you go. No way. So, like, yeah, that's how high my engagement is. It's like, wow. uh, there's a lot of things I've... Yeah, I've been blessed really. <laughs> I know, that's crazy. I miss yeah, my cat. But yeah, she's at home. Oh, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, nothing's happened to her, don't worry. I just miss her. <laughs> <laughs> um, how do you describe your personality? Um, I think I'm funny as hell. I think I'm misunderstood. I think that... Why, why do you say that, sorry? You have to wait the lips. <laughs> I've got a date soon. <laughs> He's paying you. <laughs> what I mean, kind of? But he asked you, isn't it? Hold on. What? What? <laughs> what? You got a missus? Yeah. Okay. How many times does she pay for your dates? No, if, I, if I'm taking her out, I'll, I'll pay for her. Of course. Unless she's taking you out? Yeah, unless it's like my birthday or occasionally. Your birthday at most, that birthday. No, but no. If, if, say like, a, like the other day I got a new job. She took me out to eat. That's so Oh, bless yeah. her, because I definitely would have done that. You would have done that? You would have got something when you got home. <laughs> <laughs> At most. What else then? It's a work night. At least I'll be free for you tonight. You know, we can get it down, you know. <laughs> I know how tired people get after work. <laughs> so you'd never take a, a guy out? Like you said, both. <laughs> oh, no, I mean, that's good. Yeah, yeah. That's don't, don't get me wrong. I'm a simple guy. I'll be happy. With, if she just cooked me a meal, I'd be happy with it. That's me. If it's a nice meal. Oh, so you would do that? At most. What do you do? <laughs> so, you say at most is like. <laughs> Listen, I, I haven't found a guy that I want to worship in it. So every every guy is at, is below the standard. I've been in that situation where I over did myself. I mm. played the wifey role a bit too much. Well, before back chat, by the way. And just since then, I just feel like if I've not found a guy, I've not I've not been in a stable relationship since then. So. If I've not found a guy that I love, I want to worship, not worship in that way, but you know what I mean, adore, admire, then he's sticking with the ramen noodles and um, a bit of this and that when he gets home. Ramen noodles? <laughs> I'll cook them nice with a bit of boiled egg. Do you put it in the microwave or? Oh, God. That's, that's, gel, that's gel style. How, you, how do you cook it? Oh, wait, well, you can't teach. Um, <laughs> 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 they don't have a microwave. <laughs> well, when I was in Egypt, because I went to Egypt recently. Yeah. We were cooking it in the, in the kettle. That's gel star. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hundred percent gel star. That's gel star in the kettle. <laughs> ah, the way he shook his head. <laughs> Did you uh, put more oil in it? A little bit, just to make sure it don't get stuck around the edges. <laughs> <laughs> you know what you're doing. I'll give you that. And yeah, where no. does it? Where, oh, and a boiled egg or, or like an egg on top, like a cracked egg. No. <laughs> <laughs> How do you do the egg? <laughs> so if I'm having a full English I'll always do like scrambled or like fried egg but if I'm eating egg with anything else it's always boiled what would you say are one of your like top moments in life <sighs> so far wow how sad is it that I can't even think of any you can't think of like the best or a time when you were extremely happy or accomplished getting my cat I mean, that's, that's good. <laughs> that's all right. Yeah, that's good, girl. Don't worry, that's fine. Yeah, um, no, I, I feel like, like I said, I've, I'm a soldier and I've been through a lot. 
So for me, what is an accomplishment to other people, to me, is just an everyday struggle. For me, it's a, it's a normal thing to me. Mm. So some people would big me up for a business, for big me up, I'm working here, I'm doing this, or I, I live here, I have this. To me, this is, this is my everyday life, so I find it hard to see it as an accomplishment. No, fair enough. Yeah. Um, and worst moment in life? Um, I haven't spoken about this publicly, but I'm 100% going to talk about it now. I think the worst moment in my life was finding out I'm pregnant for the first time this year. Mm. And before I could even, uh, you know, take in what was going on, yeah. it turned into an octopic pregnancy. Okay, right. So, obviously can, can that means... What that, yeah. It just means when the pregnancy grows outside the tube... Was out, yeah, outside, outside the womb. Sorry, outside, in, inside the tube. Inside yeah. the tube, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, and obviously that's dangerous yeah. for the mum. You know, the pregnancy would be, there's no saving the pregnancy, they say, so that's a done deal. But obviously the longer you keep it in there, the pregnancy grows. Um, and I just remember going, finding out I was pregnant, like on April Fool's Day. Oh, wow. Some, you know, yeah. even trying to process this was, I took about six or seven pregnancy tests. I was so in denial. But when I deeped I was pregnant, I was like, okay, cool. Then it was time to like tell the person in question. But it's April Fool's, so I just don't know if they're going to... You have to wait a day, yeah. Take him. No, I, I still told him. Okay, fair enough, yeah. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, just that week was really weird, but then I, I started going through some stuff that made me think maybe I'm not pregnant. And, you know, I was bleeding. Mm. In a girl's mind, if you're bleeding, it's, t it's the time of the month, you know what I mean? That's yeah. all I've ever known. But when I went to the hospital, they definitely confirmed, like, honey, you are pregnant. But the bleeding could be signs of ectopic pregnancy. And at that time, I still didn't know what that meant. They gave me a leaflet to make a decision what I want to do. I still didn't know what was going on till I got home. And it, I researched and I realised and I just think I broke down completely. Oh, right. I just, like, shut down. I broke down. And funnily enough... Um, I believe this was Easter. Mm. So all of this, and there was a strike with the doctor. So all of this happened on a Saturday. And actually, why they were giving me the leaflet? Because they wanted to give me the injection on that day. I see. Yeah. They wanted me to go home and come back that day. But I think for that specific thing, it has to be a gynecologist, like a do doctor in that department. And I think due to the strike, they didn't have any. Wow. Then Sunday was Easter. Monday was bank holiday. <clears throat> my aim was to call them by Tuesday and just get this sorted now that I'd accepted what was going on. But by Monday, um, I was admitted into hospital. The pain wow. and agony that I was in, I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah it's all right. It was just so... Um... That must have been a tough weekend, yeah. though, because I know these things can, can be fatal for, for you as well. Yeah. Uh, well, I lost the tube. Yeah. Um, it was... Oh, sorry. I, it was no longer an injection thing by the time I went to the hospital. It was straight surgery. Do, do you feel like it, they prolonged it a bit? Or? It wasn't their fault. It was bank holidays. And nobody could have predicted a pregnancy to have got... Like, nobody could have... It was only two days. Oh, I right, went on I a Saturday. It was Monday morning, 7 a.m. The, the, it was crazy. Yeah. So nobody could have predicted that. And it was Sunday, it was Easter. There's just nothing anyone could have done. And it never came on Sunday, the pain. So I, have, I wouldn't have had a reason to call them. But when I got there, they said, it's, it, you know, it's not an injection thing, honey. It's a surgery thing. And I think I broke down. They had to give me morphine. I was in so much pain. I couldn't lay on the bed. They had to hold me down. But cut long story short, by like 10 a.m., I'd done the surgery. Oh. And they removed... Um, they removed the pregnancy. Um, I lost a tube. Um, I had a cyst on my ovary. They removed that as well. Wow. And um, obviously, I, I'm just telling, I called my dad. My dad only found out on the phone that I'm pregnant and I'm having surgery right now. And so he flew down from wherever the hell he was and with his wife and they stayed with me the whole time. But I just wasn't myself. A part of it was blaming myself. Well, am I the reason why I lost a child? Is it my lifestyle? Um, I, I, at the time I was drinking, I thought, was it the alcohol? Like, I was in such distress. Yeah. Um, 
yeah, it took me a while to really accept what what ectopic pregnancy was and um yeah. And at the time, Shade Bower, <laughs> they did post me, but I was so scared to talk about my pregnancy publicly that I allowed them to go with a complete different narrative. So at the time I'd also received my results for HPV, mm. which I got the all clear. It's something that women contract and they do get it for men but it only is determined in women when they do their smear tests so without going into that i got those results back and i had it all clear mm -hmm. the same week i came back from this ectopic pregnancy so where i had all the stitches and stuff like that i just kind of took a picture and i used that as an excuse why i've been in hospital and why i wasn't well and shade Bower posted it and i had a lot of people being so mean to me like saying that i had like an std that i need to stop chopping wow. bare man i need to stop doing this but at the time, I was just thinking of my pregnancy, and I, I was more worried if of how if they can be insensitive about that. Imagine what they would have said if they ever found out I was pregnant, and I'm still grieving. Does it kind of scare you sometimes, like what what people can uh, choose to put as a narrative online? <clears throat> um, I think, like I said, prior to all of this, when it came to myself, I'm a fighter, and I clap back, I ignore it, whatever. I never affected my daily life ever. Especially in person, it was a complete different response as well. I never had haters in real life at all. Yeah. But I think, I am, let's just put it this way, like I totally understand why people keep their children away from social media. I see. I can totally understand. Why? Because children are so innocent. If I put my pregnancy out there, my unborn child, I was like coming up to two, three months now. My unborn child is just going to be a subject of verbal abuse for, for no reason. They don't even know the story. Yeah. Like, and, I, and again, working with children and stuff like that, I just think I had a diff... That just opened my eyes kind of thing. Um, even about sex and how I looked at sex and how to really... You, you need to really be protected. Like, I never want to go through that again. Mm. Um, I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. And... My body changed after that. My belly was like giving me problems kind of thing. I was struggling to get it back to my normal size. I'd gotten really thick and I, I just started feeling really insecure about myself. And um, that's when I went to Egypt to go and quickly do surgery. What, what was the surgery in Egypt? So I did um, a quick, so I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm wearing, like a, I'm wearing a Faha right now. So earlier I had to like get up and sort out. I, I actually don't know what that is. You said it's like bandages, right? Or like not, a, well, I'm wearing two things right now. I'm wearing a yeah. Faha and I'm wearing like a little bandage thing. Okay, right. Yeah. But I just did surgery three weeks ago. Okay. And I did liposuction. Yeah. And I just, I, I had a little bit of fat, so I just transferred it into my hips. <laughs> just, just a teeny, weeny, weeny <laughs> bit. So that like, my hips were like 46 inches. I'm now like 50 inches. Uh, my waist, yeah. I'm, I, don't want to, I don't measure. I don't want to measure my waist because I'm still getting smaller. So I've got to wear this like every day for like a while. You got what, sorry? I've got to wear what I'm wearing underneath oh, see, every day for a while. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and the most interesting thing about this surgery, I was awake. Were you? Yeah. Did they like numb anywhere, right? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I, about to say. <laughs> um, I had local anaesthetic like everywhere. Okay, right. Like yeah, pumped yeah. into me. But yeah, I was awake the whole time. Is that I, was on, I was on the phone, I was on FaceTime. To who? Um, my cousin. You're crazy. You're crazy. <laughs> I, I hate surgery. You don't understand it. Scares me. Oh it scares man, me, I just yeah. hate anything to do with hospitals, doctors, yeah. GP. Men are just wuss, man, when it comes <laughs> to stuff like that. So does that not qualify as a BBO? Because you got like uh, from the you said from the. Well, I didn't put it in my bum, so I can't call it a Brazilian hips. butt lift. But it's definitely okay, right. a fat transfer, like. Yeah, 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 it's the same process as a BBO, but with the local anaesthetic, not the general anaesthetic. And it went well. Well, I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> you seem I'm happy yeah, yeah 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 I kept it a bit on a hush hush because yeah. like, I've been just going through so much this year just too much has been happening to me I just can't and like I said I didn't want no bad mind evil eye all of this rubbish the same time I was doing my surgery that's when baddies UK was coming out <laughs> I got people are you going to the show are you in Croatia I, girl I'm, I'm trying to get my fat out my belly <laughs> man shh, not bringing too much attention to me so yeah that's basically what I've been doing this year it started off really tough with the case the pregnancy yeah there was another issue which i won't disclose right now more family matters yeah and then 
yeah, it's I hectic year. Yeah, it was really insane. It was insane. Is it kind of calming down now? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, finally, finally. For Christmas. <laughs> For my birthday, that's the main. When's thing. your birthday? My birthday is November the twenty seventh. All oh, right, right, okay. Yeah. Yes. All right. So with the surgeries, has it always been kind of how many have you had? If you don't mind me asking, like kind of like uh, a few. I've done everything. I mean, I'm going to be 31. I started this when I was like 20. All oh, right. And what was your reasons for kind of starting? I was fat and ugly. Is that how you felt? That's what I was. Are you sure? Like, if you look back at your photos now, do you look back I post and my, I'm, I'm so pink right now. <laughs> I post my... Uh, even if someone calls me ugly, yeah. I, in my eyes, I am pinger than what I used to be. So I post my throwbacks all the time with no... With no like, I don't mind. You guys can see the old me because the old me ain't got shit on me today. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. The one thing I would say yeah. I had then, I had confidence, and that's the confidence I have today still. But I think it's just natural. As a human being, as a woman, there are just things you want to change about yourself. And you want to keep up with the time as well. Trend for women is different for trend with men, you know. Mm. The trend for women is completely different. So it's like... I wanted to be in trend. I wanted to look good. I mean, if I look at myself now, look at myself then, I look younger now than I did then. All right. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you've had kind of like BBO. Have you done anything like face or? Damn. God. No? Yeah, I have. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I, I need to do more. My birthday's coming up. So, I've done my cheeks. I've done my chin. I don't think I've got them in right now. I think some of them have, like, faded out. But my lips, 100%, have been done. I've done my nose. Oh. Um, is that something you recommend to people as well? To, to Listen, girls? whatever you want to do that's going to make you feel good yeah. is what I'm going to recommend to somebody. So whether it's fillers, go for it. Surgery, go for it. I'm not going to tell you that you're going to look like me or you're going to have the same experience as me, but whatever makes somebody happy in this life, I'm always going to tell them to go for it because tomorrow's not promised. You understand? So, yeah. True. Um, in Backchat London, do people get paid? Why don't you go out to director? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all want me to get in trouble. <laughs> Smart ass. <laughs> Is calling men short body shaming? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Is it not the same as calling like a woman fat? Men have insecurities too, you know. Yeah, but the thing is with short men, they're so angry. Well, that short men, that's just, short men syndrome. Uh, yeah, I feel, mm. like they, I feel like if they were humble with their height, then fine. But like you're short and you're mad. You're short and you've got a stunt and let everybody know you've got money. you got to let everybody know you've got a big car, even though you need to jump out of it. But do you, <laughs> do you I just feel like with short guys, it's just, it's just I, I don't body shame. I'm a, I'm a short babe myself, innit? if I take these heels off. I'm... Yeah, but you're a woman. No, that's what I'm saying, but yeah. I, everyone's tall to me. If it's, oh. I don't know how short we're going right now, but if we're talking about my height, then hell yeah, I'm going to body shave your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, like, there's no reason for you to be this short. <laughs> Straight up. Oh, fair enough. Um, I mean, do you, do you have a certain requirement that you won't date below? In terms of height? Yeah. Now, yeah. I love tall men. Why? I, I love my men stocky. What's this, move about, what's this thing about tall men? I, just, I love men my men big. I love my men big and stocky. Not even just tall. I, I want a bit of weight. I want to hold his belly. Like, I want to... Oh, you like men with like, belly fat? Oh, uh, bless you. You showed me yours, but you ain't got much. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I did not show you much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> no, but like, okay. Um, I don't... I, I just... I'm a, I've got bigger over the years. So I think my type changed with that kind of thing. I was much, much slim. I was like a size eight. I still had a booty, mm. even when I got surgery done. But, um, yeah, as I got older, I got thick. So mm. my type changed kind of. I'm like a guy that can hold me, a guy that can carry <laughs> me. You know, yeah, that. But you, li you like a guy with a bit of belly, though. For real? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't mind a bit of belly. I don't, I don't, I don't want to see him with abs. I don't want him really looking like him. <laughs> you can't be like him. He's, he's too ripped for me. That's too much. Why don't you like abs? No, I man, thought, he'll, be, he'll be getting on to, he'll be body shaming me. Oh, okay. <laughs> I ain't got time for that. No, no, he'll be body shaming me. I got, we'll be standing in the mirror and I, me, I, I like to play with my belly, innit? I like to, play, I like to stretch my skin. He'll just be looking at me up and down like, this girl, just, just getting sick of me. Just getting sick of me. So I can't deal with that. I, have, I, I, like, I like to eat. Mm -hmm. I like to eat at stupid times. 
<laughs> I can't I imagine him just coming back from a jog and I'm there eating Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, poor kitty. Yo! It's gonna be war in the house. So yeah, I like a guy that's just like a bit casual like me. Like we, we wanna look good, but we want we don't care about how we feel. We enjoy life. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I mean like, we wanna feel good, but we're not too fussed about how we look. Okay. As long as we are above the standard. Still above the standard. I don't want my man to understand it over look. <laughs> You still gotta be above the standard, and he's gotta be punching. For real? Oh, Why you like you like a man that looks kind of less in looks than you. Um, no, he just gotta be punching. I told you I'm the confident babe. I go for the quiet guys. Remember I said that earlier. Yeah. He's gotta be punching. When, you, it's the, when it's the guys like him, it's the, that's the wahala. But you also you also <laughs> said. <laughs> I can imagine him and women. I can imagine him and women. Ah, headache, toxic, <laughs> drama, block, block, block. I can imagine. See men like him. Those are the men you got to stay away from. <laughs> they look good. But <laughs> <laughs> for the for the camera and for the audience, it's, it's my friend that does um, calisthenics. So he's in good shape, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very defined. Very defined. Very <laughs> just, detailed. Just for context, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's funny. Um, do you think body count matters? Do you know what? I don't think I've been asked this question in so long. All oh, right. I think body count matters if it's a topic you're having. Because mm. if you're having the topic, clearly it matters to somebody. But I think... The only questions that get asked normally when I'm dating someone is more of my relationship status and what has been happening in the last six months to a year. It seems like they don't really ask me anything prior to that. So body count conversations don't come up for me. Um, and if it comes up, then either that guy has heard something or knows a couple of guys I've been with, or he's really like bothered about body counts. And mm. I wouldn't really sit with a man like that because I couldn't give a toss who my man has slept with. As long as he's clean and he ain't got no pick me. That's all that matters to me. I've got two questions now. <laughs> Go on. But you don't like a man with a, with a, with a, with a kid? I have got kids, so why is he going to have kids? If I had kids, that's different. Yeah. If I had kids, I, I would probably be more prone to date men that have kids because it's just an easier transition. But I don't have kids, so that's a why you would for me to start my, my rest of my life with a man that has kids. And I think it's more harder for a man and a child dating than it is with a woman and a man dating. I feel like men let their baby mums be free. Do they? More time. They don't want headache. I promise you. Oh, right. okay. Compared to the other way around of women letting their baby dads be free. Yeah. And women don't kill me. I'm all part of the sisterhood. I'm just speaking facts, you understand. It's always drama with the BMs compared to the, to the BDs, you know what I'm trying to say. Mm. Um, more time, more time. Not all the mm. time, but yeah. But yeah. I ain't trying to have drama with someone's BM because I'll, I'll do damage. I'll do damage and, and I won't be able to take it back. I don't, I don't like violation. I don't like headache. Do you understand? So I don't even want to be in the situation of being disrespected. And, you know, there's children involved and stuff like that. No, 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 no. That's not my, my style. Like, any disrespect, then I'm out. <laughs> can, you, can you fight? Would you, would you say you're good at fighting? Um, I can hear you. Know, you know, let, me keep, <laughs> let me keep 100. I'm putting a bit of weight in it. I'm a bit slow. So some of these young girls, they might be able to run a couple laps around me. Don't tell them that, don't tell them that. No, I'll tell them that, because once I've grabbed them, they okay, better run okay. a couple. They better make sure I'm out of breath. Because <laughs> if I catch them, if I catch them with this left hand, it's not even the right hand, the right hand's the hook. If I catch them with the left hand, it's game over, always. But I'm, I'm going to keep it true, I'm much older now, so I'm not, I'm not as fit as I used to be, you understand? Like, I'm not in the type of stuff I used to be when I was young. Mm. Like, if somebody tried to fight me, as in tomorrow... I will do my best to defuse it as much as I can, to be fair. Unless the person has genuinely assaulted me, then I have to obviously defend myself. That's a different situation. But if I can defuse the situation more than... I, come on. I've been there, done that. I don't want to hurt you. I'm old. I don't want to hurt myself. <laughs> <laughs> I might snap a bone. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what I'm at. <laughs> no, fair enough. Um... If you had a partner, how much money does he have to earn? Double. Double? Double what you earn? Yeah. How come? Why double? So that he not, if, if, if he earns double, it just makes life easier, no? Why not? I don't understand. Why is there, <laughs> why is there even a... I'm, I, at least I'm saying I'm working. 
Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. not even trying to say that he's got to earn a certain amount and I've got to stay at home. If I'm on 40k, I want my man to be on 80. But is that a minimum? Like, he has to be, like, for you to be with a guy. I just, well, he just has to, he can't, me and him can't be in the same tax bracket. There's going to be problems in the future. I can guarantee you. That's what I mean. Okay, maybe I'm exaggerating by saying double. Let me, let me be realistic. What I'm trying to say is, if I'm in a certain tax bracket, I don't think it's advisable that he's in the same tax bracket as me. Finance will be a problem in the near future as long as we're under the same household. So, I'm good. <laughs> Have you have you met guys that are stingy with money? <laughs> <laughs> um, like, can you think of a time when you know what? I'm not going to talk about them. You know why? Because mm. where I'm where I am in life, any man that I've dealt dealt with, even on a friend friendly level, they're very generous. Oh, that's good. So yeah. I'm not even going to talk about men being stingy. Maybe when I was young, maybe because we were young then, so men men's mindset was different then. Yeah. But the men that I speak to, they're generous with money, food, dropping me home. You know, that it's it's I can't complain. No, so, fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in a relationship, if you were in one, are you a traditional woman or? <laughs> um, so I've, I've, in my head, in my head, I'm yeah. not traditional. In my head, I'm not submissive. In my head, I'm that girl in it. I'm that baddie in it. But from feedback that I've been given, <laughs> yeah. I am traditional in a relationship. I'm a lot more tamed okay. and I'm a lot more submissive, shockingly. But um, I'm single. So, <laughs> <laughs> All right, for, for a woman to be submissive, do they have to, you know, like, well, they have to rate their man, right? They have to have respect for your whether man. You're right? sub I mean, you, 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 you want to rate your man whether you're submissive or not. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, you don't worry with him. But <laughs> I think the submissive part is more like they are more, they cater to their man more. Do you understand? You have some women that are more independent. You have some women that like to cater to them and that like to cook for their men, that like to, they like working their mediocre jobs whilst their man is working one top, top finance job like that. You know, they like the little allowance their man's giving them, their nails. And then there's some women that they work hard and their niggas love that. Their niggas love that. They've got a boss babe. They can call their babe anytime. Yo, listen, I beg you go grab this money for me. Do you understand? It's like, it, it really, it really, it, it really um, depends on preference. You understand? I think for me, um, in my head, I am that independent woman, but I think when I've found the right guy that I've really, really liked, I think I've somehow come, gone into that submissive like mode without realising. Are you, you kind of... You Wait, know... hold on, guys. I've got a date. Let me just check there. <laughs> I can't, go. <laughs> <laughs> just make sure that he's good. Let me message him. Hi, babes. Still here. Gonna leave soon. X X. <laughs> Hold on. There's another guy. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Oh, I'll get back to him later. Yeah. Anyways, let me stop. <laughs> I got a question for that. Yeah. Okay. Keep going. <laughs> um, it's up to you if you want to answer. Yeah. Um. Is it? In today's society, is it is it normal now for a woman to have, you know, multiple men that they're seeing and dating and forget today's society. Why have men been dating multiple women and seeing multiple women all these years? Why has that never been questioned? But the women women now know the game and have mastered the game. You <laughs> wanna question women's part in, in relationships. So much gender wars of today. Why? You men have been doing it for time. Anything that men are complaining about when it comes to women, even the masculinity, oh, women are too masculine, women are too fat. Men have been fat for time, bro. <laughs> men have been fat. Bro, you men don't do surgeries. At least we try. At least you guys body shame us to the point that we even want to do something about ourselves, you understand? Mm. Bro, you men will stay how you are. You men are just different, in, <laughs> in my opinion. Like, there's a whole gender war going I, I, and for me, I feel like, you always mean this, I feel like low-key men are nasty. What? Men, men ain't got good hygiene. No? What's, what kind of stuff have you seen? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm not going to talk about my experience. You know why? Because I felt like when I was on Backchat, every time I spoke about an experience, every person I spoke about clocked, I was talking about them. <laughs> yeah. You call it, uh, you call I don't want them problems anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so what I am gonna say is I've got I've got four brothers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I know that men at one point in their life, I'm not singling you two out yet. I'm not putting you in this category in it. 
But I know men at one point in their life, and, and Kevin Hart confirmed this because this nasty man did it himself. <laughs> I know that you guys have at least gone a day or two without bathing at one point in your life. Kevin Hart confirmed it as a... <laughs> Someone's nodding in the back. <laughs> Kevin Hart confirmed it. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that you guys would wear the same clothes. I'm not saying... I'm saying I'm being very specific. Just the bathroom part. I'm not saying you guys that men will wear the same clothes head to toe or anything like that. That's that's mad. If that's the case, that's still mad. But not only has Kevin Hart confirmed it, and he confirmed this whilst he's with his wife and kids. Yeah, this wasn't like he did this when he was young. <laughs> yeah. As a grown man, he he set the level straight. He was talking about men and hygiene or whatever. Yeah. And also, like I said, I've got problems. So I know what I've seen with the naked eye. And then, when it's time to go out, come and see the way they will just spread their balls like this. <laughs> <laughs> Bro! Yo, niggas are scum, you know. I know niggas that will chop the same, two, three different babes in the same day. Two of them, he's barebacked. I'm not even capping. Men are something else. Men are wild. So don't come and sit here and question women's part in all of this. Because you guys have been moving mad Right from the day Jesus was crucified, King Henry VIII married how many women? Eight. All right, then. But now, if a girl decides that she wants to chop someone on a Monday and chop someone on a Sunday, she's now a whore. Do you understand? I think, I think that's because times have changed, though. Back in, back in them days, like, or even but that's, 50 years ago, but, the, man, the man was the breadwinner, you know, the, the guy, you know, the, uh, woman, the woman was at home. Uh, you know, men, but it's changed now, right? Oh, so because we are making money now, no, you I'm guys not. have a problem with us fornicating. No, it's like, I mean, we're I mean. boss babes now. We're not our own, bro. We don't need your money, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we got our own money, bro. <laughs> we can do our own shit. You know what I'm saying? I just think men are just cl clocking. No, sorry, I just think women are clocking the game. Mm. I think they've clocked the game in the last five years or so. And I think they... <sighs> Look. Sex sells, beauty sells. Mm -hmm. And it's unfortunate for men, but it's one of your weaknesses. And there are some women out there that use that to their advantage. The pretty privilege, the light-skinned babes, the BBO babes, you name it. Mm -hmm. We got the game on lock. <laughs> you men can't do shit. <laughs> is, is there no like negativity to that? There's not like... Um... You know, like a lot, a lot of women now are getting married later on in life and stuff like that. I mean, that. the negativity is yeah. delay. Like, look, I can speak on this, you understand. I'm going to be 31. I have no man, I have no kids. I don't even have someone that I can say it as a potential. I'm not even sexually active. Like, my life is so boring. And I have to look back at those decisions of being that girl. Do you understand? Because I wanted to let Mandem know that I'm that girl. But I'm the one suffering for it now. Do you understand? But am I... Am I in a place where like, I regret it? No, 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 no. I'm glad I clocked the game. If I want to settle, I settle. It's not hard. I might not settle for someone that I love straight away. I might fall in love later. But I've got my options. That's not a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I want to settle, if I want to lock all of this off, all these interviews, social media, all I've got to do is press delete and go and collect one of these babies that are on my case, you understand, and just hum mm. eat humble pie. <laughs> is that something you can do? No, I tried. I remember I thought I was dating someone. Yeah, I tried, yeah. I tried, I tried. That's to be genuine, right? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it, yeah. It, so I had to stop. It, it, it was like, no, this is so not me. Did you feel bad after? And of course, I, I sent them a nice message. I wasn't rude about it. I, oh, I sent good. them a very nice message. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, like, uh, he was such a good guy. He was such a good guy. Like, I'm not even gonna um, mm. move mad about him. Like, you know, um, I think, I think. Low key, he's a bit, a little bit irritated with me, like because he messaged me like he has my pictures, right? Like yeah. my little passport pictures. Like I, if if we're oh. dating, I'm gonna leave stuff like that in your car or That's your nice. wallet. So he yeah. had one of them, <laughs> but it's like a little passport photo, babe. It's like this small. He's yeah. like, yeah, like so. What do you want me to do this picture? Do you want to link up? So do what do you want it? Do you want me to drop it? To? <laughs> this guy lives in South. I live in East. All right. Do you know what I mean? So it was just yeah. a bit like okay. He wanted to see you. I know, you. but I would have preferred if he just said that. Oh, I get it. And then he yeah, messaged yeah. me like, sorry to disturb you. I'm like, bro, we're not beefing. He's hurting, man. He's hurting. Yeah, so that's the only thing yeah. that just annoyed me a little bit. Then, like, he posted something on his WhatsApp story. Mm. I think he was in a WhatsApp group with the Mandem. 
I don't know yeah. what they were talking about, but his friend said to him and another guy, I don't know if it was you kissing under the bridge or somebody else. <laughs> so, and he was talking to the guy that I was dating. Oh. <laughs> All right, then. So oh, no. I watched it a couple times to just make sure I'm hearing correctly. But I didn't message him to the next day. <laughs> I was like, oh, you're kissing under the bridge, yeah? And then he put allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> and I just haven't, I deleted his number after that. <laughs> uh, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> but other than that, he, he was a good guy. He was a good guy. He just, it just, it, it, it wasn't for me. He, he needs a different woman. Why, why do nice, girl, nice guys never get, like, the, the girl? I'm, I'm not the girl he's looking for. Okay, right, right. I can't answer that specific question, but for him, I'm not the girl he's looking for. But some guys are too nice to girls, or you don't even have to talk about your own experience. Just in general, really, yeah. Uh... Are, some, are some guys too nice? Does it put women off? Yeah. 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 What is it? Is it like tardy? Or is it like it's annoying? Or I'm very raw. Do yeah. you know what I mean? I'm not into that mushy, cute bullshit. I see. You yeah, understand? That's just me. Yeah. Don't be looking into my eyes with puppy love eyes saying, oh, you're so beautiful. <laughs> I love you, but Like, I, that's just not, that's not me. Yeah. So, I can only speak on me. Don't do that shit. Because I'm not interested in that stuff. That's just, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. um, you've had a couple of beefs, right? Uh, uh, what should we talk about? Go on. What's, what's happening with Lani? Is it all What good? do you want me to say about Lani? Lani was my dog. She's not my dog anymore. I don't know what's going on with her. Oh, so she, oh it's neutral. It's neutral. I wouldn't say it's neutral, but like, oh, right. uh, she's blocked. Yeah. Oh, you're just not cool. Like, yeah. yeah, she's blocked. So you're not really like, beefing anyone she's right blocked. now? Or anyone else, I mean. You're not really beefing anyone right now? Um, it would be very mad for someone to say that they're beefing me because everybody knows how I stay kind of thing. So I just feel like there's only one, two girls that I would say, mm. okay, cool. I, I, it's, it's not going to be calm when I see them. One is Jade Black. Mm. But I don't, I don't feel like it's going to be a madness with me and Jade Black. Who's Jade Black, sorry? Just for people <laughs> that don't know. <laughs> you got in spot on. Spot on. No, just for people no, that don't know, you know. Spot on. For context. No, spot on. You trust me, you spot on. For you to say that, if this clip goes out, if this is the scene that goes out, spot on. That's exactly the response. Who is Jade Black? Like I said, when if I see Jade Black, I don't think it's going to be war per se. I truly believe there's a misunderstanding between me and this girl that I'm a oh, bit right. confused with. Really. She's younger than me as well, so I'm not going to deal with her in that manner. But I, I don't know if she remembers the miscommunication because I think right now she thinks I'm the crazy one. And I, I think she thinks I've got a problem with her. <laughs> so I know that she's avoiding me in all, all costs. Like we were meant to have like a bop, you know, bouncers. Oh, but, yeah! yeah. Um, uh, the owner of Backchat did the show Full Disclosure. They're going to do season two. Me and her are meant to be on the show. Bro, she just pulled out of everything. Why? I don't know. So I feel like... And then I spoke to my hairdresser, who's also her hairdresser. Oh, and small world. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's the way she's described it to my hairdresser. Like, I'm the crazy one. So I'm just thinking, okay, cool. Maybe it's not beef with her. Maybe there's a miscommunication that I've missed. Like, and I'm, I'll put my hand up to it, do you understand? Like, I'm willing to actually speak to her. Like, it's actually fine. It's not an issue. The other girl, who's not on social media, Stacey, all I can say is that I prayed that I've completely given my life to Christ by the time I've seen her. <laughs> I'm going to leave it as that. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, I feel like you'd be a good box. Well, not that you'd be a good boxer. I feel like you could do all the boxing. No, for, no I can box, but I'm just for, fat. For bouncing thing. <laughs> I, I can box, but I'm just slow, yeah, but babe. Sometimes you need a bit of weight behind that punch. No, 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 babe. I'm slow as hell. Like, remember, it's the legs as well. You need to have the legs, the strength. This is calm. If you've yeah, got core strength, training, you know. Yeah. yeah, I've done all of that, babe. And like, there was just certain requirements they had for me, which I weren't really trying to keep up with. <laughs> like, I see you do a little boxing. That's what I'm saying. You know, I do my yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I see do the my thing. Get me, yeah. babe. You know, I do my thing. It's just that I'm a bit slow. Yeah. But for me to get faster, there's certain things I need to change with my diet, my lifestyle, and I'm just not willing to give that up yet. There was no reason for me to get into boxing. I'm not boxing anyone. I ended up not boxing Jade Black, so mm. I'm living my life. I'm not doing any of that extra stuff that I was required to do. Fair enough. I see you actually do go gym. Yeah. And you do a lot of home workouts, right? Yeah. Um, do you find that girls that get BBLs they don't actually keep up with it? 
like do workouts. Most people like don't, but I highly recommend, especially the older you get, that I recommend you keep up with it. It gets harder as you get older, yeah. yeah. It does get yeah. harder as you get older. You yeah. understand? You put on weight. If you have babies, that changes. Yeah. Uh, your hormones, if you're on contraception and stuff like that, that changes. Um, they also they, they always say that women hit a second wave of puberty at like 25. And I oh, absolutely yeah. agree on, on that. Like, I oh. feel like we hit a second wave at 25. Like, if you think you didn't have breasts then, it's, it just doubles. You understand? Like, everything changes with women's body. Mm. So... Oh, this bag them's touched a little bit. Like, I can't even look. Getting ready for your drinks. Ooh, let, me, let me just check Bay again. Yeah, so no, we can I, I, I ain't got too much left anyway. That's fine. I'm just pissed because he's not driving. Like, why are you not driving? <laughs> Is that not a requirement for a man? Um, yeah, because I ain't got a license. Ah. So I don't know if I'm on camera whilst I'm doing this, but <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm sure you guys can see I've got my far heart on, so. Do men use you for your body? Do you feel like? Do you feel like men reach out to you for? Men your think body? they use me for my body, but they don't know that I'm using them back tenfold. They don't know that? that I just want to enjoy myself too. A lot of men really think that they've won the prize, but they don't know that I just been, I just haven't <laughs> had anyone for the last couple of weeks, and you know, I mean, a lot of guys think they're winning, but I'm a very basic baby. We ain't won nothing. Like after we've done the deed, <laughs> we gonna keep it pushing. <laughs> after I've got whatever I needed, even if it's not. On a sexual basis, you understand that like mm. once I am satisfied, we keep it pushing. There's a guy that I've not responded to for like three days. Like, he was a bit of entertainment on the bus because he was the bus driver. And I was going to, <laughs> I was going to Primark. Mm. We spoke the next day. Okay, your time's done now. Like, he really, you know, that's just me. Like, men can't use me. Like, I consent to things. I'm okay with things. Mm. You understand? If I'm not okay with things, I Meet it. <laughs> I'll let you know. Okay, okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, social media, is it a positive thing for you? Is it negative? Do you feel like it affects women's mental health? Mm. Depends on what you're using it for, I guess. Mm. Um, if you are trying to pursue the influencer life, content creator, creative, yeah, it's it's it's... It's going to have its positives, but it's definitely going to have its negatives. And some days, the negatives will overweigh the positives. There are going to be some days where troll are just, trolls are on your case. But then there might be a day that you get invited to Giggs' after party. Do you understand? Like, so it does have its days, but then see, yeah. if you're coming on social media as a business owner, it's all positive. Everything you post, you're, just, you're trying to generate views, engagement, and money. So yeah. it, again, it, it, really just, if, it really just depends on what you're um, trying to do. What you're using it for, yeah. Yeah, basically. Yeah. No, I get what you mean. Um, what do you think about OnlyFans? And, like, there's quite a lot of girls that go on OnlyFans now, right? So, yeah, I mean, what I don't have OnlyFans, but obviously I had a premium snap. Yeah, you still have it, or? Um, uh, oh, it's not as popular as it used to be, obviously. So much, Remember yeah. I said to you, that case that I had, I felt like there was a lot of things they were bringing up that just kind of threw me off, and it, it really changed my way of seeing things so mm. i've got some loyal people on there but they know that i am not posting like i used to be because i don't want people to think that i'm that girl you know as much as you know they've got permission and i enjoy like talking to them or whatever i think only fans i did join it at one point in covid it was just a little bit too explicit for me at the time like and i just felt like anyone can get access to these pictures the, mm. you couldn't see he was following you you had a user one two three four five six seven. You, you know what i'm trying to say like it could be your, your uncle's bridging from like it was just not safe for me yeah i made money i remember i made i didn't make a bit of money i was posting like toe pictures and me like in a bikini i used to be a video vixen so i'd post like behind the scenes me twerking stretching out my bum cheeks wherever you know extra stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um sense of content but i just felt like they were really asking for some stuff did, did the toe pics do well i ain't got cute toes but mine did fine people oh. always pay for my toes but i don't think i've even got cute i get my toes done a lot though mm. yeah yeah that's what it is i get my toes done a lot keep the maintenance high or when you've got if you've got ugly toes there's you cannot have a, a naked day <laughs> <laughs> no, so yeah, that's me. <laughs> but do you think it's a good it's a good career for people? You, you think it's quite career? Good? Yeah, career. Well, is it not a career? I mean, if you enjoy what if you if most of the only fan girls are genuine sex. This is babe. This is this is porn. 
Mm. This is not like little sexy pictures. This is porn, babes. So if you're asking if being a porn star is a career, la, I don't know about all of that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sex should be fun. Sex should be consensual. Sex should be between two people that have a genuine attraction for each other. And I think when you're taking it to that level, it's more of a service. Mm. How do you feel after? Is it fun anymore? You know what I mean? So that's how I see OnlyFans. But like I said, I can't judge them because I have a premium snap. And we ain't going to disclose what I do with my premium snap, so don't even go there. <laughs> but I charge money. I mean, I, I, I charge up to like 150 sometimes just for an ad. A premium? Like as in like a, a sexual so, ad? Or like a... No, no, to add me. Oh. On Snap. What, 150 pounds? Yeah, add me wow. on Snap just to even join the story. Like, oh, and for right. me to add you back, yeah. Like, wow. yeah, that's yeah. So, I'm really mm. like I said, remember, I spoke about manipulating social media. So, mm. I'm really good at what I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. Would, would you call yourself an influencer or social media uh, figure? I like the term creative, creative. Okay, yeah. that's that. That's what I would class myself. Yeah. Others might call me an influencer, some might call me a public figure, some people might even call me an artist because I've had music out in the past. But yeah. because I do multiple things, I do so many different things at once, and as I've mention i would call myself a creative okay right right and do you feel like that's uh would you ever quit your job to do kind of creative stuff full time the money has to be out of it like long the double? money has to be long more more than double double's more. not enough all oh, right it has right. to be long it has to make me i have to not want to work i need to work again what is it like stability or yeah yeah, yeah. it has to be stable right? i mean i've made i've done bookies i've been paid 150 i mean say 450 a um, couple hundred, you understand? But those bookings weren't regular. It was popping when it was during COVID because everyone was at home. Mm. But after COVID started opening up again, I, I, because my presence was more social media, I was finding it hard to make that money in person, especially because I didn't want to be a video victim anymore. I didn't want to be in people's videos, even though I'm doing a video shoot this month. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. What's, yeah, I was going to ask, what's your next project? Or next thing you're just working on, yeah, that we, that we might see you online. Know, like, so this interview was really spontaneous, so mm. we're just going to see how you guys, like, post it and see what comes out from it, and then I know from there. But obviously, I think music is something I'm going to work on in the new year and my business. Nice. Um, but mainly this year, I had to focus on my mental health and my physical health with everything that I went through. And um, that was just my priority. So social media... I was a bit distant. I'm sure you mentioned the pictures. Like I got rid of a lot of pictures. Yeah. I had to take a huge break from social media and just focus on on me. I had to be selfish. I mean, fair enough. It's, yeah. it's, it's your life. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Um, was your profile always private as well? No, I just put it on this morning. You just came at the wrong time. Oh, is that she? Ah, morning? did you? I just did it today. Yeah. Oh wow. You just came at the wrong time. Yeah, yeah. I just did it today. Yeah, yeah. Literally, oh, fair it was enough. open this whole time. See? Oh, fair enough. It, it was open this whole time. <laughs> it was open this whole time. You literally just did it today, like uh, because my birthday's coming up. <laughs> um, I just want to go a little bit, get my feelings done, sort my life out, heal from my surgery, and obviously I don't know when you guys are posting this interview as well. So like, I just want to be prepared. Um, sometimes shade bar, the thing is, they just post you. They don't really give you heads up. Yeah. And you just be oh, you're on your ding, 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 just getting all these. <laughs> random notifications you know so like at least i can prepare a little bit you know what i mean so yeah sorry about that my darling but it's cool, yeah. cool. It's cool. Yeah, <laughs> you're yeah. accepted now we're good now man yeah, we're yeah, friends good. Now. <laughs> uh can we talk about addictions because you've talked about this in the past right yeah go ahead um i think what i saw was sex and alcohol are these kind of things that so all of those things yeah after after the pregnancy that got reduced to possibly minimum um, oh, was like a big I, I, change, yeah. I was really humbled by that pregnancy, and obviously, sex was a big factor in all of that. Um, so, it's funny because at the time I was on the journey with God, mm. but that physical thing happened to me, and then I took a break from church, but I still wasn't able to engage in those activities that I used to before, especially the alcohol. That's why I'm a little bit like, ooh, with the Magnum, do you know what I mean? Oh, like, back strong, in the day, yeah. this was, I could drink probably four or five of these. Mm. Do you know what I mean? But it's been a long time since I've had a drink and been in certain activities. Um, I don't want to put myself in that situation again. 
Um, I don't want to put on weight again. I have to do surgery again. So I've just kind of stayed away from that type of tempta temptation. <laughs> no, fair enough. Um, is this something that you feel like a lot of people struggle with as well? I don't feel like people struggle with it. I think people are just in denial. Oh, right. Of so they make it like norm. Normalized. It's just a norm. Even yeah. just down to casual sex, um, even sex in a relationship, there's, it doesn't have to be every single day. Like alcohol, stuff like that. People are just in denial. But mm. we live a life now. We live a very fast-paced life. So I get it. I get it. Um, but I don't, yeah, I, I don't think people struggle with it. I just think people are in denial of how it's affecting their daily routine. Um, yeah. I speak to men all the time about sex and I say to them, don't you feel a little bit better that you ain't nutted? I know that sounds mad. What but do you mean? <laughs> just hold the nut, man. Don't you feel a bit healthy, fam? Why would you hold it? Like, I, cool, I've got a best friend here. His name's K Ink here. Yeah, that's my dog. He was a whore when I met him. He was just, he was something else, man. Honestly, he's, 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 he, I love him to bits, but I think the last year I had to have a conversation, I was like, bro, you can't stick your ting and everything, man. you got to just calm down, like, value that shit. Hold it, because you see, when you find the one, that session is going to be out of this world. And that is how sex should feel like. But if you are constantly putting yourself in a situation where you're just sleeping with God knows who, where, where, who he was sleeping, he would go to a rave. He lives in South, right? Thought in Heath for whatever. Mm. He called me one time in Allgate, obviously I live in East, at like eight in the morning. I'm like, Boski, what one? He's like, yeah, man, I just came from one girl's house, man. We went out last night to say that her paycheck is Allgate. Come to your house. Bro, you literally <laughs> came to my house after shopping, you know? But <laughs> what I'm trying to say is where he's at now, he took my advice and he's in, mm. a, in a, an amazing, stable relationship. They live together now. Wow. Big and, change, yeah. And this was someone I only, I only met him two years ago. Yeah. You understand? So, um, the point I'm trying to make is there's just certain things you need to let go. So when you finally do it, it just feels just better. It just feels nicer, you know, same as alcohol. Yeah. Like this was nice. You understand? But if I was drinking the way that I was drinking, I would have been probably asking for the next bottle. Mm. You know what I mean? So, yeah, you know, that's, that's what I've got to say. On the that's, that's something I heard the other day. Um, someone said, you know, like men are too, they're not precious enough with their seed. Like, it feels like they're just flinging men, it everywhere. Men are, men's health is different to women's health as well because men yeah. don't really take, not take care of their health, but they don't do certain checks until they get a health scare. Whilst women, we don't have to wait for a health scare. Mm. We don't have to wait to get chlamydia before we do an STD. The minute we bear back that guy, once the two weeks mark is up, that girl's doing that test. I promise you, mm. without even telling the guy. Yeah. There's men out there relying on women to tell them. To tell them so that they don't even bother getting... As long as she's clean, I'm good. I ain't even got to go for it. Let me check the next thing. So it's, it's unfortunate, but that's just how it is with men and women. Women are a bit more cautious about their bodies and their health. We have a lot more going on in our bodies over the years compared to men. So I, I, I guess I can understand. But like even down to HPV, a lot of people didn't know that it's actually men that pass that shit on. Mm -hmm. um, but, but men, but men, but men, don't, get men don't get... Yeah, no, yeah. men don't get tested. Yeah. You don't even get symptoms, men or women, but men don't get tested for it. Mm. And the test that is required for that HPV, you can only get it when you're 25. So you could have lost your virginity, hun, at the age of 18. That's, wait, there's no test for men. That's real life. There's no test for men. Yeah, yeah. And then the test that is suitable for women, we're yeah. not allowed to start that until 25. Right, right, that's true. And we do yeah. it every three years. Yeah. No, it's not like it's done regularly. It's every three years. So that's how it's determined. And HPV cells can lead to cancer, quite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's what Lani, Lani had HPV around the same time as me. Oh, they right. posted her. She uh, actually went to the hospital. I think she had to remove something to avoid it getting to the next stage. So yeah, it can be really, really um, severe if it's not checked and monitored, if you do have it. And yeah. obviously I did have it. I, and you know, it went from three years to getting a yearly check. Mm. And when I did my second or first year check, Gone. Yeah, yeah. So, no, that's good. That's good. So, go get yourself checked out, people. Yeah. Basically, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Don't ignore that smear test, women. I know it's uncomfortable because it's like a little plastic scissors, and you just don't open up your teeth. <laughs> and it's like it's it's it's, it's very inv very invasive. Basically, I get yeah. it, man. I get it. But it's you're be it's better to be safe than sorry. It's them them things that that they showed us in 
in sex ed in school or when you used to go clinic can't, in I, school like for I the, don't even think they showed me that I went to a Catholic school bro oh you didn't go for the it, trip no nah, it never prepared me for them plastic scissors <laughs> that be opening and they, they be winding it open <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow. it's crazy <laughs> <laughs> well, but what, what I want to say as well do you think men are do you think men aren't protecting themselves as much as in like you can get a woman pregnant like that because they have quite a lot of unprotected sex, man. Don't, don't I think with men, again, it's the whole in denial stuff. Oh, I think just everyone's just in denial. The way I got pregnant was not the ordinary way. What's that? Because if it was the ordinary way, mm. I would have got the pill. Oh. So we are even in denial to possibly getting pregnant through just something as small as pre cum. We are, yeah. we are very in denial in today's society of a lot of things. We think pull out game is strong and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> We are all, we are, I was in denial to what happened to me, do you know what I mean? So, here we are. <laughs> no, fair enough. All right, closing questions now, because I've kept you for long, and you've got a date to go to. <laughs> I know, but he's flopped me so many times, he'll be all right. All right, so you can make him wait. Yeah. I'll, I'll sort him out, I'll, I'll, think, I'll talk to him when I get out, I'll call him. <laughs> all right, so this one's kind of deep, but we ask everyone, you know. It's Let's go. What, what inspires you in life? What inspires me is the children that I work with. Wow. Um, I don't have kids myself, and obviously I went through a traumatic experience, but I think I wasn't given a proper childhood myself. So working with these children as young as like six months, it just allows me to know how much we can really mould them into being better people, better people than we are. Mm. And it, it's, it really does start from a very, very young age, even just teaching them their right from wrong, teaching them about... British values, racism, cultures, how to cut food and eat with their hands, how to go toilet, mm. um, identifying abuse, identifying if children are part of um, families that promote terrorism. Um, yeah, it wow. starts from as young as then, identifying children that may have autism, ADHD, a physical development that maybe has not yet been checked by the health visitors because they normally do their checks at two years old. You know, it's frustrating waiting for something that long. And, yeah, I think working in my field has really brought the soft side out of me. Um, and that's, that's just me. Like, that's what gets me up every day. I can stay in bed all day sometimes, I'm telling you. Even if I've had a shot, gone back to bed chilling. But if it's work, if it's kids, if it's my boss, Yasmin's active for that, mm. always. So that is what keeps me going in life. Nice, nice. It's a nice answer, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, do you believe in any conspiracy theories? <sighs> you must have one. Everyone's got one. I think everyone's got one. Yeah. Okay. Some people think the flat... Oh, no, have you got one? No, 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 no. I want to hear you. <laughs> I want to hear you. <laughs> uh, some people think the earth is flat. Some people think it's round. Oh, okay, cool. I think two packs alive. You think two packs alive? <laughs> no. <laughs> I've heard that one a lot, but like, possibly even Michael I don't know Jackson. People believe it. What? I'm Michael Jackson too. I just feel like this. No. Okay, I'll tell you conspiracy theory. Yeah. Ghost from Power. Ghost from what? Power. Yeah. He's alive. <laughs> 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 Oh my gosh. <laughs> we never saw the body in any bloody coffin. That's true. We didn't see no body. So you see how they're doing this new power with Tariq? Yeah. Telling you, man. It's going to come back. He has to. They brought back Tommy. <laughs> they brought back the mumsy. Mm. Yeah, they've done a couple, you know, guest appearances. <laughs> Maybe even if it's just his ghost, like just talking to his son, like, you know. Don't stay dead. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Would you, would you go into acting? <clears throat> I won't go into acting because I'm the real deal. <laughs> um, I don't think acting is really for me. I think I'll be a good actor, though. I did at one point do a bit of drama when I was really, really young. I studied TV and film production. Mm. But my character in real life is just too distinctive. And I think I might struggle to separate that person from where I'm supposed to be. So would you go on reality shows then? I mean, duh. <laughs> no, I mean, would you, keep, would you do more? Oh! Yeah. Uh, <laughs> if I weren't working in my field, maybe. 
maybe but the more shows that i do the more people recognize me even my parents so it's just just trying to stay away from all of that right now i'll be honest with you so fair, enough. Enough. <laughs> fair enough um i didn't ask you about that moment on back chat <laughs> what is there to ask <laughs> <laughs> what kind of because because i think that painted you in bad light and when I actually do listen to your, to your interviews and stuff like that, you're a lovely person. And me speaking to you now, you're a really nice person. Oh, thank you. No, no, honestly, yeah, yeah. I think, I think, you know what? I've done so many interviews since mm. then about this one particular episode. And do you want me to be honest? I think people just need to take into, the, into consideration that I was 26. Mm. I mean, I wasn't young. And I heard there was more to it. I heard he was kind of winding you up all day. No, he wants you watch the, you understand? Yeah. So, like, it's like I could be here all day, but I just feel like... I don't need to justify what was happening in that moment. I just need to apologise to other people that I may have offended. But in that moment in time, mm. I said what I said. And I did what I did. Mm. And if anyone violates me in that manner, I would obviously, much older now, conduct myself differently. But it's never going to be a day that I'm going to stand there and take any form of violation. Because I won't even take it from my parents. Mm. we all were born in this life on our own and we're going to die on our own and all our family and friends are going to grieve and they're going to move on do you understand so I'm not going to let the next man or the next woman talk to me sideways and I'm going to sit there and take it and that's just all it was but unfortunately how the clips were edited I looked like I was the aggressor <laughs> you got my wig in my hand you got me chatting about people's mummy them <laughs> got the man them all with, with dramatic reactions like oh <gasps> oh it was so dramatic, but we're talking about four years yeah. ago, possibly. Couldn't give a toss about the episode. I am who I am. No, fair enough. Is there anything you want to talk about before we close? No, Any, I think anything we, you want to address? I think we touched a lot of things. I'm good, man. I don't think I need to address anything, man. I'm good. I'm in a good place. I wish everyone well. Even the two ops that I mentioned, like I said, Stacey, though. Know, but as for anyone else's name that I mentioned, like I wish everybody well. I don't really have any personal beef with anybody. I'm in a different space. Um, and it's taken me a long time to get here. I've had my own personal journey. And that's what I'm focusing on right now. So Nice. That was yeah. really a pleasure. Yeah, thank, thank you, for, you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. And can you shout your socials one more time? So, Big Pinks underscore on Instagram and TikTok. And my Snapchat is just Big Pinks with a Z. Nice.